They say automation and grinding don't mix, but today we're gonna prove the industry wrong. So they say robots can be trusted to unload and load parts due to the variations and high accuracy of grinding. But with United Grinding's solution to automation, the Versa Load, and five tips and tricks I'm gonna show you, we're gonna make the impossible possible. Today we're on a United Grinding Machine, the Studer favorite CNC. What's unique about this machine is that it's attached to a Versa Load. Now this machine is fully automatic with an automatic door opening system. That's perfect because the door opened right now. Now what we have today is we have 60 hydraulic pistons and we're gonna be grinding the OD on all 60 of them. I'm gonna show you five tips and tricks that way we can make sure that every part comes out absolutely perfect. So let's talk a little bit about these hydraulic pistons. Now there's some pretty cool features on this part that's gonna help us out. So first and foremost, we're gonna have two centers, one on either side. That's what's gonna hold the part inside the machine and give it a center line to rotate off of. Next thing we have is we have the drive location, which is gonna be our key slot. So what's gonna happen is chunk system with our 3D printed grippers are gonna come down, grip the part that we're gonna grind, rotate it around. It's gonna insert that key slot into the grip of our custom fixture, put it between centers, and we're gonna grind it. Now a part like this is gonna be perfect for the VersaLoad system. Why? Because the VersaLoad system can hold up to 22 pounds. That means if a part is 22 pounds, it can pick it up and place it inside the machine. So this part right here is something perfect especially if you're doing hundreds of these things. So the favorite CNC that we have on our floor has an automatic door, but you don't need one to be able to operate the burst load system. You can actually have a different attachment that opens the door for you, and we'll have to show you that in another video. So Travis just gave us our Quantum make, the one to two OD mic from the Tutoyo. So let's go ahead and check the first and the last part of our grind. Let's check the first one. So we're at 50 millionths above our, our tolerance. Let's go ahead and check our last one. I mean, it's the same. So we did the first and the last one. But I don't want you to think that, oh, he just checked the first and the last one and called it good. I was actually making measurements throughout the process. So I'm just going to grab a random one off the second tray. Look at that. 50 millionths under our target. So one of the first tricks I want to show you is thermal stabilization. Now you can do an entire video for an entire month for an entire year all about thermal stabilization. So all I'm gonna tell you is that these United Grinding Machines or any other grinder need to be brought up to temperature when you turn them on. Now, this isn't really a spindle warm up. Yes, you wanna turn your wheel on, but you wanna bring everything up to temperature. We're gonna turn the machine on. We're gonna go ahead and rotate that wheel. That way everything turns on and throughout the headstock, tail stock, and down the waves, everything's gonna be flushed with coolant and that coolant's gonna be controlled by a chiller in the back and what that's going to do is that's going to make sure everything stays at a constant temperature. That way when we start repeating grinds, we're going to get the same accurate product each and every time. So let me go ahead and show you a couple of different spots where the coolant is going to come out and keep everything at the same temperature. So the number one reason why I want to actually have the wheel on is because without the wheel on, you're not going to have that thermal stabilization running through the machine. Now, before you do this, safety caution, you wanna raise up your wheel guard, that way the operator is protected. So let's go ahead and start talking about the tail stop. So these knobs right here is what's gonna have coolant flowing through the system and be able to cool down the tail stock while you're operating the machine. And how that's controlled is the grain lines on the studers all have coolant in them. And once it's connected, you just flip the switch and it'll come on. So now the second tip I wanna show you is this center right here is that's what's gonna be rotating that part. So this is a carbide center. So we don't want that center to heat up because it can throw off our concentricity from the center to the part and it can start rotating that part out of round. So how we're gonna keep that center cool and lubricated is we're gonna attach a coolant line to the tailstock. That way it uses some of that coolant that's at the same temperature and it's gonna shoot right into that center 
keep it in nice and lubricated and nice and cool. That way every part is gonna come out perfect. Now let's talk about the program that's gonna create accurate, repeatable parts. The first thing I wanna do when I set up the VersaLoad is I wanna call up my program 07915. Now this Studer grinder has a C axis and that's how you're able to thread grind and form grind or set up your VersaLoad. So we're gonna go ahead and run our C axis reference position and then after that, we're gonna call up O1000, which is gonna be the home position. That way the robot knows where the home position is to load and unload parts. That's gonna be repeatable. That's how you have repeatable load and unload parts for your robot inside your grinder. So I program the part in O, which is my program designator, 0001. We're gonna go ahead and call that up. Program search. Now, if I wanted to come in here and make any changes, top right, come into programming, select it. Now, this is the program I have selected for this cycle. So the first tip I have for you is we're gonna traverse these ODs. I don't wanna plunge grind these ODs. If I plunge grind, that's gonna create a lot of heat and a lot of force. And if I don't keep up with my dresses, that's gonna put two grooves inside of that wheel. And I don't want that. What I wanna do is I wanna come down on that part and traverse across it that way I'm using up more wheel, I'm getting a better finish, and I'm achieving tighter tolerances. So with this Studer grinder, you can choose to oscillate, traverse, or just plunge, or vector plunge. You can do whatever you want to do. For this specific cycle, we're going to go ahead and oscillate this program. So how we're going to do is we're going to call up our finish dimension. And if I wanted to come down here, my oscillation stroke, that's how far that wheel is going to oscillate up that part. I'm only having it oscillate. 200,000 so it's going to be super quick across that part but how I'm going to do it is I'm going to slow that down with a traverse speed of 10 inches a minute now what that's going to do is that's going to make a short distance to traverse that I don't have a lot of room to traverse the whole length of the wheel but I want to do as much as I can that way I can use up more of the wheel but how I'm going to achieve a better finish is I'm going to slow it down I'm going to go 10 inches per minute now the fourth tip is going to be spark out what do I need to do to achieve an accurate grind after I've oscillated on that part for so long. So when you're grinding, you're actually putting a lot of pressure and a lot of heat on that part. Now, if we come up over here to the control, this is a brand new control from United Grinding. This one actually has a Marpoff setup. The first section, this is where our Sensitron. This Sensitron picks up the harmonics from the wheel into the part, and it's gonna sense that vibration and that acoustic noise, and it's gonna give me a sensor. So when I'm in contact with that part, that Sensitron's gonna pick up and what a spark out is going to do is that's going to relieve, once it's at full dip, it's going to relieve that pressure off of that part with that grinding wheel. And I'm going to be able to watch my Sensitron travel down and that's going to help that part and that wheel kind of balance each other out. And it's going to start relieving pressure and I'm going to achieve a more accurate grind. That's especially important when you're doing long diameters. That way you make sure you have enough cleanup, kind of like a spring pass on a lathe. So the spark out I'm going to use, I have six seconds. How I'm gonna have that programmed is actually have it programmed inside my oscillation grind. So let's go take a look at it. Q. Q is always gonna be your dwell time. So if I wanna do six seconds, I could just type in six and I'm gonna have a spark out of six seconds. So after I do my rough, my semi-finish, and my finish grind, it's gonna oscillate on that part for six seconds. Now, what I wanna make sure of is whatever time I decide to give it, I wanna make sure that my Sensitron is gonna start dropping down that way I know I have a good spark out. If I don't have enough time in there and it just goes and comes off, I don't want that. I want it to come down at a nice steady pace and go away. Anywhere between six and eight seconds is a good starting point. So on top of that, this specific grind cycle is only a minute and 30 seconds long. Now that's super quick, so a six, eight seconds ain't gonna affect you now. The last thing I wanna talk about in my program, how I was able to get super accurate parts. So if I get out of this and I come up here, I have my dress. So you can program a dressing cycle inside the program. You can have it anywhere you want it. You can have a dress program before you grind the part, after you grind each part, in between your grind cycles, in between your rough, in between your semi-finish, in between your finish. After so many parts, you can have a dress cycle anywhere. Now some grinders might want to dress every two to three parts, which is okay. It would definitely speed it up a little bit. Don't get me wrong, it would speed it up. But what I don't want to take the chance of is if I oscillate it and my wheel becomes dull and I come back in and I don't catch it, I want to dress every part. 
So another reason why I want to dress every single part is that's going to keep my Tirolet 80 grit H wheel looking brand new, nice and sharp, and giving me a good grind every single time. So that's one of the benefits about grinding is a drill bit or an end mill gets dull over time. A grinding wheel, you can come in and resharpen it, and come back in and keep going like nothing ever happened. That's one of the beauties of automating grinding. You come in with a brand new wheel every time. So the wheel speed is going to be 5500 SFM. So that wheel speed is going to be pretty slow for a 20 inch grinding wheel. And I'm going to be taking a 3 tenths depth of cut going 5 inches a minute across. I'm going to be dressing one pass per part. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to put in here A1, which is going to be a dressing after V. V, 1V is going to be your roughing cycle. 2Vs is semi finish, 3Vs is finish cycle. So once it roughs out all the main material, I have two thou left on it and then it's going to go dress. It's going to come back. It's going to remove that two thou. Why do I want to do that with two thou remaining? I want to do that because I actually want the wheel to break down. When the wheel breaks down, I'm actually going to get a better finish. So not only am I coming in with a nice sharp wheel, I'm removing just enough material. That way my wheel breaks down and gives me a better finish and it gives me a more accurate finish. So that's why I decided to address that. So that's my five tips and tricks on how to automate this process and achieve perfect parts every single time. Now with the setup like this, we were able to hold 50 million tolerance throughout all 62 parts. And what that means is that normally a thousand plus piece order would be made impossible for a smaller shop because they can't make it at that high volume. But with automation, we turned that impossible task possible and we allowed that shop to compete at a higher level. So if you like the automation and grinding, make sure you're gonna leave a comment, like, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one.